what's going on there folks good early saturday morning here in northern california uh it is saturday july 3rd 2021 about 8 29 a.m west coast time here in california and got a little bit of information to talk about on a solar flare of all things the first x flare in four years struck in the early morning hours of uh um uh this morning that, that's pretty impressive really impressive this is coming off of that uh this is actually a spaceweather.com article um they're stating here first x flare in four years a new sunspot emerged during the early hours of july 3rd and promptly exploded isn't that crazy how quickly stuff can amplify kind of goes beyond our means of understanding scientifically anyway uh, producing the first x-class solar flare since september of 2017 uh, there it is right there. You can see it significantly. Uh, a pulse of X-rays briefly ionized the, Earth's, uh, the top of Earth's atmosphere, causing a shortwave radio blackout over the Atlantic. That's pretty cool, actually, <laughs> if you're into, um, uh, into stuff like that. The source of this flare is an unnumbered sunspot now growing near the sun's northwestern limb. Uh, but it's crazy. Yesterday it did not even exist highlighting the unpredictability of solar activity. More flares may be in the offer, off, offing. So we're, we're kind of getting out of that solar minimum and shooting into solar maximum. This is pretty cool. I love watching solar weather activity because it plays a major part on what goes on here on Earth. Not only um, when it comes to volcanoes, uh, plate tectonics, weather, but also affects radio like CB radio for years. I'm, I, when I was growing up, like uh, in the in the 90s, I guess, I wasn't really growing up, but I was into CB radio back then. And we could, uh, we could talk to people at extremely long distances, way beyond that four mile uh, supposed limit due to uh, all the sunspots and whatnot on the earth back in the solar maximum um, in the 90s. And it was really cool. Um, I may get back into that if, uh, if we get some cool sunspots popping up there on the globe. And it looks like uh, it's pretty cool. I mean, it looks like it's going to happen. At least, uh, you know, I'm just, I'm impressed with how something can pop off so, uh, so quickly producing an X flare like that right there. Pretty impressive. So the, a new sunspot is merging at the circle location. That's going to be this one over here, right there. I want to see if they, they don't have see if they got the video sometimes it's a video that they post up a video but that's impressive how something so new and unnumbered right now can produce such a significant uh, flare that's pretty crazy Let's see what this one looks like no coronal holes facing us up top yes sunspot right there uh, of course there's sunspots all over the place but the one that produced the X flare back over here I was wanting to see if they had a little movie, uh, and I'm sure I can get it off the uh, solar, uh, the other solar weather uh, sites. So for right now, looks like um, there's the X1 that happened at 14:29 UTC time, and it is currently well, it's what is it, 15:34. Yeah, something like that. Um, but that is really cool. That's, I mean, that's awesome. I love it. <laughs> I get pretty excited on solar weather. Uh, let's see what we got here. June 13th, June 14th. I mean, uh, June, July. Wait, wait a minute. What do you got down here? July 13th. It's not July 13th already. Unless I went back into the into the past updated july 14 is that 2000 oh yeah that's what it's showing some events from july 2000 right here i thought this was the recent events well this kind of shows you the classification of the x-ray solar flares there's c there's x there's um some powerful ones that can uh, really put us back in time if it came down to it far as forecasting goes, uh, looks as though, let me check out the other uh, website here. Where'd it go? Where'd it go? Do, 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 space weather. 
Okay, hold on one second. Let me see if I can pull it up here. Well, forecasting still looks like potential 65% uh, chance of a C flare, but that's possible. It could be, uh, an M flare is only at 15%. I think we're gonna see at least an M flare and only a 5% of another X flare that peaked right here. You can see that reaching that threshold of the X class flare. Uh, once you start getting up there, it looks kind of looks like we're swinging up anyway on a kind of an upward trend over the last uh, 12 hours or so, 24 hours. So it's possible we could see another peak of the of a, of a flare. I can say this just happened. There's the uh, this this is kind of going down. Normally this will be a complete blackout, uh, be orange and red. see here it just it doesn't really look like it's hit the graphs yet of course this was kind of facing away from the uh the earth but it still should be picked up um, 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 um here's one from july 1st but that's a couple days ago uh they were kind of forecasting uh, uh at least a minor c flare isolated m flare so activity ramping up folks it's getting a very interesting uh See flare. I don't want to watch all of this, but uh, and these are these right here kind of show the coronal mass ejections when they do happen. Oh, there is one right there, kind of shot way off that way. Another one, another one, another one. That's kind of cool to watch. Yeah, the sun's definitely uh, coming to life, folks. So, uh, like I said, what does it mean for folks here on Earth? Um, if we get to some serious ones, serious X flares, then, you know, we're looking at potential issues with satellite communications and whatnot and some other stuff on Earth. Um, I don't remember. The Carrington event was a pretty big one. Don't want to go too much into that, but if you want to look it up, check it out. Of course, we are in modern times compared to what they were using back then, but uh, we're all dependent on electronics and electrical devices and whatnot. You know, our cars, our everything, everything revolves around a lot of satellite technology. And you get the sun up there, all it takes is one home run, one home run shot right at the earth, and well, we're not going to be good as far as our technology goes. Earthquake activity kind of ramping up a little bit, folks, in the in the western part of the United States, Southern California rocking and rolling a little bit this is a 2.5 map a little bit of movement on the pacific side and the north american plate side giving us an increase in uh, pressure out here along the san andreas fault 3.5 struck around the fontana area and also uh late last night uh, i believe there was a this one here was late last night 3.5 near bodefish bodfish bodefish i was just down in this area um few days ago checking out the salt and sea area pretty crazy driving around this area uh, just realizing how dangerous and whatnot the fault systems are it's one thing looking at it on the map and realizing it in your head but when you're down there in person it's a little little bit a uh, little bit more on the scarier side so a little bit of movement right San Jacinto fault area seeing some microquake activity but the movement on these opposite side of the plate boundary here is the uh the key to today's um earthquake activity possibly a couple three or uh, at least a 3.5 right there and then some other heightened activity near lake what is that there lake arrowhead running springs area a little cluster of quakes um and i would probably call that some aftershock activity following the main quake so far at least 3.0 but of course if there was a bigger quake then it these would all be foreshocks right so you never know. I hate using that term, aftershocks. Uh, anyway, folks, yeah, keep an eye on what's going on here on planet Earth. You know, the sun and and planets and everything like that has a uh, direct effect on what's going on here on the on the uh, on the surface, underneath the surface, in the atmosphere. Um, just a lot to uh, consider. 
and I've seen it happen a lot when the sun really ramps up um, when it comes to weather and earthquake activity. A little 2.4 out there in Tennessee, 18 kilometers below surface, nothing big, but uh, definitely keep an eye on this map today. All right, folks, I'm going to jump off here. Just wanted to give you, a, you guys a quick heads up. We do have this sunspot facing us, so got to be cautious of that one too. 2835, looks like a little one, 2836, and of course this one up here. This one looks pretty impressive though, at least um, compared to uh, the past couple years. All right guys, have a good day. We'll chat you a little bit later. Stay safe out there. Peace.